I'm Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on pre-calculus. We are discussing a test question here, which is based on rate of change. You can always pause the video, copy the question, answer, and then look into my suggestions. Question number three. Sam leaves his house to go for a run. He ran at a constant speed for 30 minutes. The path sloped upwards, so he slowed down and ran for 20 minutes. At the top of the hill, he returned to his initial speed and ran for another 15 minutes. He stopped for 10 minutes to rest. Finally, he ran at a constant speed, highest of the day, for 40 minutes and then stopped. Sketch a graph for Sam's speed versus time and a graph of distance traveled versus time. So in this particular case, we have to sketch two graphs on the given information. One is speed versus time and for the same speed versus time, you have to sketch distance traveled versus time, right? You have liberty of choosing your scale, uh, the velocities and all those things, right? So let us see how to do it. So I, I'll kind of create a graph paper here. Uh, let's say that is my vertical axis on which I'm going to uh, plot velocity or speed. And let's say this is the time. Time will keep it in minutes. On this side, we are going to plot distance with time. So uh, let's think about uh, velocities first and then we'll translate the data on the graph. So it says Sam leaves his house and go for a run. He ran at a constant speed of for 30 minutes. So we have to select what speed. Uh, so we can say for 30 minutes, let the speed be, we'll multiply that by some speed. Let us assume for easy calculation that the speed is 10. Okay. So we'll make a kind of a table where we'll have time and that is velocity. And when you multiply time and velocity, you get distance. So we'll kind of uh, create a table as we move along. So that is the most efficient way of doing such questions. So if your velocity is 10 and speed is 30, distance code will be multiply them, you get 300. So what we have assumed here is that the velocity is in meters per minute. Correct? We are taking 10 as our velocity. So we'll take a scale which is like 5, 10, let's say this is 15 and 20. And for 30 minutes, so on this side, let's take a scale which is like 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120. So when I say in 30 minutes, uh, he runs with a constant speed of 10, on the graph, it will be a horizontal line, right? So. So this is 30 for us, so it will be a horizontal line. That is the constant speed for 30 minutes. Correct? So this is at 30. Now the next point here is, he slowed down and ran for 20 minutes. So 20 minutes, speed will decrease it to 5, and when I multiply, I get 100. Correct? Now, as far as these times are concerned, easy to calculate for us. We have now the speed for 15 minutes. That means total time is 50. So here we are at 50 and that is where it ends. So we can say this comes down to this level. Correct? So we are at 50. So it's a good idea to also write the, the time and the distance and the speed together. So we could write here, uh, which this can help us to plot the next graph. So we'll write here time 
with distance. We'll use time and distance in this graph. So first is 30, distance is 300. Now the time is 50 and the distance is 400. Distance from starting which is going to be this place in the next graph. Correct? Okay. At the top of the hill, he returned to his initial speed and ran for 15 minutes. Then for 15 minutes, initial speed is 10. So we're going to multiply this. We got 150 as a distance covered. So time is 15 more. So we can say 65 and distance is 150 more. So 550. He then stopped for 10 minutes. That means 10 minutes. Stop means 0. So that is 0. But the time went by, so 75 and 550. That is very important. Finally, he ran at a constant speed, highest of the day, for 40 minutes. So for 40 minutes, highest of the day. So let's make it uh, 15. And when you multiply 40 by 15, you get 600. So, so you'll add 40 to this. So 4 means 115 and 6 means 1150. So that becomes the time and then stopped and then that remains constant, right? Okay, so based on this, we can now sketch our velocity time graph. Time is in minutes. Okay, so we were already here at 5400. Um, 20 minutes, 500. So, so that is where it is. Next 15 minutes, 150 uh, is the distance covered. But 15 minutes, we are only traveling at the speed of 10, back to 10. Okay, so back to 10 for uh, 15 minutes, which will take you to 65. So 65 is here. So we'll go up and back to, so that is at 65. Now for 10 minutes, is at rest. That means 65 to 75, it is rest. Okay, so scale. Okay, so let it be rest here. So let's say this is 75 for us. Okay. And then for 40 minutes, he ran at speed of 15. So then goes back and this shoots speed for 40 minutes. So time will be 115. And this is the top speed. Correct. Okay. So that is at 50. Is that clear to you? So that is how we are going to sketch velocity and time graph. So on a proper graph paper, this will be more accurate. Right. Now on the distance, we can take distance in meters and time will be in minutes. And as we see, we want to go for 1150 meters more than a kilometer so let's make the scale so we have this as uh, let's say 200 right let's say 200 400 600 800 so 1000 and let's say this is 1200 okay on this side uh, time we'll just keep similar 20 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, right? In minutes. So we have our coordinate points and that is why we spent so much time earlier to calculate all the things. Once you have the calculation, it is better to graph. Now, <clears throat> distance starting is zero. So the first point is 30. 3300 so that's your first point starting from here so it's kind of here so we can plot this 3300 and then 5400 so at 50 we are reaching the point 400 which is here so on this line so 5400 and then we have 65 550 65 550 somewhere there so that goes and at 75 again 550 so at 75, it is same distance since the object is at rest. Um, I mean, Sam is not running. And then at 115, it is 1150. 
So 150 is slightly less than 120 and uh, that is 1150 right there. So that becomes the final run and then it is constant. Do you see that? So that is how we could actually plot. All the relevant points are given in this table. So you could use this as your reference for giving the coordinates of each and every point if required. Great. Final point is kind of very critical. So let's write this as 115, 1150. Great. You could actually write all the points also from this particular table. 75, 550. Here we have 65, 550. And then we have 50, 400. And here we have 30, 300. Good. So that gives you absolutely correct graph for distance versus time when you had assumed some velocities uh, for the time duration given. So I hope that helps. So this is the right approach to do it. Feel free to write a comment, share your views. If you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.